Michigan Out of Doors Online is brought to you in part by... Animals have the ability to smell scent half a mile away. But what good is an attractant if the animals have to be close to smell it? Introducing an industry-first vapor system. Vapor lasts longer and travels farther. Wind scent by Fourth Arrow. Active vapor for deadly success. Hey everybody, welcome to Michigan Out of Doors. Thank you so much for joining us this week. We've got a lot of stuff on this week's show. We're going to start in the Upper Peninsula doing a little pike spearing up there above the bridge. Then we're going to drop down, do some uh, rabbit hunting with some kids, and we're also going to have time to learn from some of the best pan fishermen that we actually know here in the state of Michigan. Lots of good stuff on this week's show. You stay tuned. I'm Jimmy Gretzinger. It's time for Michigan Out of Doors. From the first spring rains to the soft summer breeze Dancing on the pine forest floor the autumn colors catch your eyes, here come the crystal winter skies. It's Michigan, Michigan out of doors. What a beautiful day in the woods. Someday our children all will see this is their finest legacy. The wonder and the love of Michigan as the wind comes whispering through the trees. The sweet smell of nature's in the air. Great lakes to the quiet stream, shining like a sportsman's dream. It's a love of Michigan we all share. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by By Country Smokehouse, a sportsman's destination since 1988. Featuring varieties of homemade sausage, jerky, brats, and gourmet entrees. Holiday gift boxes can be assembled in-store or online. Details at countrysmokehouse.com. By Showspan, producing consumer shows including Outdoorama March 1st through the 4th at Novi Suburban Showplace. The show features tackle, trips, boats, outfitters, wildlife encounters, and of course, Big Buck Night. That's Outdoorama and Novi March 1st through the 4th. By AnglerQuest Pontoons, a mid-Michigan company building boats for fishermen by fishermen. AnglerQuest Pontoons are designed for comfort and functionality. On the web at anglerquestpontoons.com. Soaking in the rich tradition of Michigan hunting for over 30 years, Vanguard is proud to sponsor our friends at Michigan Out of Doors TV. South Central Iron County in uh, UP of Michigan. A uh, little lake that's got a little bit of everything. We hope to see some decent pike today. Uh, should see some small ones, maybe some walleyes, a lot of panfish, hopefully, and some bass. Today I would be sitting with Mike Kitt while Jenny sat in a different shanty a few hundred yards away, hoping to increase our chances of getting a pike speared on camera. Mike has been spearing for quite some time and also carves his own decoys. While we waited for the first fish, he filled me in on how his love for spearing all got started. This is my 30th year of spearing pike. Um, I was originally taught the sport by an old Michigan conservation officer and uh, really developed a passion for the sport. Um, we just used spoons back then, uh, didn't really carve, but I. Uh, rekindled an old relationship with another old Michigan conservation officer who taught me how to carve decoys and that kind of brought the whole thing together. Um, make, made it more of a year-round sport. Uh, I carved decoys through the summer, fall months, and then I used them all, all winter in the spearing hole. Um, the thing I like about spearing is it, it's, it's a challenge. People have a preconceived notion about spearing that it's easy, we spear only big fish. That couldn't be farther from the truth. Um, you have to put a lot of time in if you want to be uh, successful at this sport. But what appeals to me the most is the, the visual aspect of it. Um, you get to watch fish mm -hmm. be fish and do what they do. Uh, we see a lot of other fish in the hole besides northern pike. I see panfish, bass, walleyes, a little bit of everything. And it, it's, it never gets old. Um, I see a hundred 
200 fish a year. Uh, I only harvest a couple. The fun I derive from it is, is watching the fish be fish. As luck would have it, the one shanty we didn't have a camera in was the first to connect on a pike. But Jenny was able to make her way over there as Zach's father, Dave, pulled a nice pike through the ice. All right. Nice one. Yeah. Okay. All right. What do we got here? This is a decoy I found last night in my stuff, and it's it was made by my son in 07. Wow. Yeah. A few That's years ago, cool. and he's in the Air Force right now and deployed, and uh, I can't even be with us today or this this winter, so. That was really cool. That is awesome. So how did it happen pretty quick? It did. He came in right between my feet and uh, came right to the decoy and started to leave just as I threw the spear. Oh man, so, that's awesome. Yeah, that was neat. Yeah, what have you been seeing down there today? Seeing a lot of small fish. Um, a lot of them right uh, real close to that 24 and and, uh, and just smaller. So seen some bass and bluegill and seen a little bit of everything. <laughs> But this is the first one that was big enough. Nice. So, That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, that was fun. With one pike on the ice, Mike and I continued to patiently wait, hoping we would be next. But at the same time, we were just enjoying the sheer number of fish we were seeing and the interaction with the decoys. The first 10 years I speared, I, I, I didn't use decoys. We mainly used spoons. Um, I had tried making a couple decoys, but I, I wasn't any good at it. Um, then I received the proper tutelage from somebody who really knew what they were doing. Um, Mike Holmes, who's the president of the Michigan Dark House Anglers Association, gave me a lot of tough love in the beginning, but I, I became a much better carver, and that opened up a whole new world for me in pike spearing. I equate it with a fly fisherman that ties his own flies um, and derives a great amount of satisfaction from having a, a trout bite something that he made himself. Same way with making decoys. Um, I really get a lot of satisfaction from watching a pike hit one of the decoys that I made myself. In my life I bought one commercially made decoy and I only swam it once. It swam horribly and that's when I decided I needed to make my own and since then uh, I've, I've had a, a lot of pleasure making this a, a year-round sport. <laughs> well, we got to talking, as Spears will, and uh, he come in like a flash, grabbed the decoy, and by the time I got the spear ready, he was already on his way out of the hole, so it was uh, Aaron Rodgers' Hail Mary. When I started spearing, I, I quickly realized that if we wanted to preserve this sport, we were going to have to get other people involved. Um, we have to show this sport to, to the rest of the sporting community um, and show them just how much fun it really can be. We're constantly losing people every year uh, in hunting and fishing. Uh, they're just they're losing interest. This is a sport the entire family can participate in and enjoy themselves and still spend quality time outdoors. Um, I would strongly encourage people to, to seek out uh, clubs that are available. Um, I've been a board member for, of the Michigan Dark House Anglers Association for a number of years. One of the things we do is try to promote our sport and preserve what we have. Um, we have some really good people out there that are very concerned about this. Um, they, they practice good conservation. Um, they only take a few fish. When you manage a species properly, 
method of take does not matter. Um, we only take a few to eat. Uh, the rest are fun just watching. And we practice what's called look and release, where if we decide not to harvest the fish, we merely let it swim away. There's no incidental hooking mortality. That fish is free to swim another day. And uh, that's the other beauty of this sport. We only harvest what, what we decide we're going to harvest. There's a lot of misconceptions when it comes to pike spearing, and it was nice to spend a day on the ice with someone so knowledgeable about the sport. There's certainly a lot more that goes into it than most people realize. We ended the day with two pike and dozens of other encounters. Special thanks to Mike, Dave, and Zach for a great day on the hard water here in Michigan's Upper Peninsula. Well, we do have a lot of good ice fishermen here in the great state of Michigan. So many opportunities from the Upper Peninsula all the way down to Southern Michigan and everywhere in between. We're going to spend some time on the water right now with some of the best ice fishermen we know. Myron Gilbert. What's going on this morning, Jenny? How's it going down here? Well, we're going to have a good day today here. We're off to one of my favorite lakes where I've done a lot of tournament fishing and, and uh, haven't really been here this year, but I've been told we can probably find some. Uh, typical situations on this lake, it's big water. We're going to probably stop a couple spots, and when we find them, we should do well. Uh, that's what I anticipate. But uh, I anticipate catching red ears, which are really challenging here, and sunfish, and some crappies. And maybe even a walleye or pike can possibly show up here. We might not catch lots of fish here today, but they're going to be quality fish, which you know, we're talking 10 inch, you know, maybe plus red ears, crappies, maybe up to 13 inches, which in Michigan is a good quality fish. Uh, and bluegills, you know, over nine inches, some of them possibly here. But the, the pumpkin seeds are just beautiful here. Yeah. Yeah, very vivid colors, and uh, I really enjoy fishing here. It sounded like we were in for some fun on this cold, windy day. Joining Myron today were his son, Myron Jr., with his brand new puppy, Cody, and Myron's fellow charter boat captain and fishing buddy, John Gizchak. While Myron Jr. and Cody augured a bunch of holes, Myron and John got set up. So what did you look for when you came out here? What were you... What would we look for? Uh, we uh, have fished the lake numerous times, and we have areas where we've, we've caught them in the past. And when we ran out of this spot, we'd already checked three or four other spots there'd been no fish. So this spot we pulled up, and there was fish here. So, But it's like a lot of big lake environments. They're not always at the same spots every time. You right. know, Here, it could happen today that, mm -hmm. that we're not on them, and we might have to go to another spot. But that's real typical. And that was what makes the difficulty factor here much harder on a big water like this. Because just walking out, look how far you know we've went. You know, yeah. we went a mile from the launch anyway. Yeah. You know, or you know, pretty good distance. And yeah. So we'll see what happens here. But we have to be mobile too. It's like Great Lakes fishing on these big bodies of water. You can't fall in love with just a certain little spot. You yeah. Know, because it could be here today and gone tomorrow. Just like that, huh? Well, not a keeper, but that's our first one. All right. Starting off with a bluegill here. Not skunk. All right, but he goes back. Back in. You are like in tournament mode. That's fast. There we go. Back down. We'll see what happens here. A lot better fish here. There's what we're looking for. Look at that. There's what we're looking oh, for. Oh my goodness. That's what we're looking for here. Beautiful. First good crack. fish of the day. That's what we call a red ear here. Oh, that's a red ear. That's a red eared sunfish here. Oh. See, you can, usually they got a touch on the back, but that's a red ear. Goodness, that's They've beautiful. They've been planting them in these lakes and they're just beautiful. Look at that. Just shut the camera off. It takes a little while for these big ones to approach the bait. They're real, cage, <laughs> they're real cagey. All right. You know, but I mean, when you can lip them with your. You saw them like that, them are keepers around here. That's awesome. <laughs> that is a big sunfish. That's crazy. I mean, that's a standard bucket right there. Wow. <laughs> well, Cody got all tuckered out with all the excitement, and while he was taking a nap, John and Myron Jr. were scoping out the water with an AquaView camera. When he's competing with the U.S. ice team, Myron can't use electronics, so today was different for him. 
But even on a day of fun fishing, there are some habits that die hard. Oh, it makes me where I got a short leash where I don't set long in one spot anymore. I'm moving all the time, always trying different tactics, techniques, and the thing I have found that's the most important is just like real estate, you got to be on the fish. So I spend a large amount of my time getting where the fish are, because if they're not right there where you're at, you're not going to catch them. And we use all kinds of tools, we use electronics, we got cameras, and that's what we did today here. The first good hole, my son walked around with a camera said right here dad there's a bunch of them right here and we went and I started catching them immediately once I went over there. So staying very mobile is a real key uh, to the success that we have you know very key it, it's probably the number one thing just moving around and don't be satisfied if you're not catching them stay moving I'd rather stay moving and then eventually you run on to them and uh, things can be real good then. Oh. <laughs> there we go. Wowza, look at that one. One of them real tricky ones that come up there and sniff the bait. <laughs> thought they were safe, but not quite. <laughs> Another one of them great big red ears here. Good job. Man, they're beautiful. It's gorgeous fish. Got them babies on your hand. Yeah. Devil's Lake is the place that Myron calls his training grounds. He's been fishing here most of his life and knows the lake very well. He told me before we came out today that we may not catch lots of fish, but we'd be catching some big ones. That was proving to be the case out here. Well, except for John, anyway. In fact, it seemed to be just the opposite for him. <laughs> That's great. Um, you might be going hungry. <laughs> yeah, there's not much meat on that one, but I'll put him back and let him get big and catch him next year. Oh, that Awesome. <laughs> You're having fun though, right? Oh my gosh, I'm having a ball. It's about the fourth little one like that I've caught. Yeah, I think Where's Myron's setting you up in the... I think he's got me set up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's heavily fished, you know, year round. It's a very difficult, clear body of water. Some days you don't get them, some days it can be extremely good. But by and large, it's very challenging, and a lot of people that come here get very discouraged. <laughs> you know, we had a little Facebook post, and people were stunned that we're catching this grade of fish. They're not easy to catch here. It takes a little inside knowledge, and you got to get after them a little bit. But it was my training grounds, and, and uh, I'll never forget this lake. Ooh. Oh, here we go. Get him. Oh. Hi. There we go. All right. Picking out a few here today. Yeah, we're not smashing them, but it's been all big quality fish here. And we're starting to put a pretty good catch together between us here. We got another one. The guys were picking away at the fish and had a nice pile of them scattered around the ice at all the different holes they'd been fishing. They were hoping to have a fish fry for lunch, and the next big red ear Myron hooked into was going to help add some big fillets to the pile. Ooh. Oh, wow. Whoa! Oh, oh, oh. Myron! Look at that red deer. That's about oh, the best of the day goodness. right there, girl. Look at that fish. That's pushing a pound right there. For our natural lakes, that's a giant where we live here. Well, each lake's different. Um, this is a big predator-based lake here compared to like a small pond lake where you don't have a lot of the big predators and the pike in there. Them fish will act totally different. They don't hide in the weeds all the time. They just swim around because nothing's eating them. But in these environments where you have the big predator fish, these fish hide in the weeds. That's their safety is in the weeds. Uh, they either have two ways of being safe in, in a lake. It's either going deep or they live in the weeds, just, just like animals do living in swamps, that same thing. And these fish will come out of these weeds to feed, but when they, when they lay up, like when we went around with the camera looking, they'll just be laying in the weeds, just, you know, in, in a dormant stage, just laying there. Now, when they get active, they'll start swimming around and they're much easier to catch. It was just like we'd fished where we just caught a few and they hadn't been there earlier, but now all of a sudden they're moving around and we drop in and we catch some. Well, Myron and the guys ended up with a pretty impressive catch for the morning. And on a cold, windy day like this, all it took was talk of a cozy restaurant and some fresh fried fish to convince everyone to call it a day. Being charter boat captains, Myron and John participate in Michigan's Catch and Cook program. The program started a few years back and allows captains and their clients to bring their freshly cleaned catch to a participating restaurant where it's cooked up right away. It's the perfect end to a great day. Best part of the pan fish trip right there. Off the beats from the lake to the frying pan. 
you know, you know what I got to say? That's right here in the Michigan out of doors. <laughs> <laughs> Special thanks to Myron, John, Myron Jr., and Cody the Puppy for making this a fun day out here on Devil's Lake. Well, any time that you can get out into the woods and do a little bit of rabbit hunting, well, that is always a lot of fun. You bring some kids along, it makes it even better. Here. This, this is Fast Tracks Tucson. Yeah? Yeah. We call him Tui. And that's uh, Big Max there. We had quite a crew as we hit the woods today. Other than Sean, we had Elise Benson, Rob Pree, Danielle Wolfson, Cage Herrick, and Jamie Golden. The older guys along in this trip were some hardcore beaglers. Jamie has become a friend of mine and was nice enough to let me tag along as we hit the woods today. A lot of snow, you know, deep snow. Um, there's a lot of game in the woods, you know, so hopefully we'll get, get the dogs to get something going, you know. But, uh, well, when we got, you know, people hunting, I, I kind of like to set, set the... Uh, you know the guys that are shooting up first and then let the dogs loose because otherwise the dogs are just going to kind of follow you up in there and then hunt off you. Right now they're getting set up and we'll just cut the dogs loose and they'll get in there and hunt all the stuff and hopefully we'll get one going and they're in the right spot okay. and then when the dogs start running. As we bumped around in the thick stuff we were moving the rabbits right towards Jamie and the guns who were set up in the perfect position. Get the beat on him, boy. Keep the safety on him. Shoot him. Shoot him. Shoot him. Shoot him. All right. Now, even though we could have shot a few more rabbits had everyone had a gun, that was really not the point today. Getting these young hunters involved is pretty important. Very important um, to me, you know. Um, my boys are right at the age where they're just starting to hunt a little bit. They're, they're kind of young yet, but uh, for me, you know, I, I like to go out and uh, shoot a few rabbits myself once in a while, but mainly it's about the dogs anymore. If I do take a gun, I end up don't I end up not shooting anything, you know, because um, I want to I want to run them, you know, keep running them. And uh, but it is important to get the kids out to me. You know, I'd rather have them shoot them than me because I've shot enough. Hold on. It's right here. What do you guys do? <laughs> That's some close range shooting. I don't know if I can see it on camera, Should but it's better. Should I shoot it again? I think I broke it. <laughs> nice job. Yeah, I'll grab it. Leave. That was the old what? Five yard shot? <laughs> the old hip shot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> it made up for the last one. If I didn't shoot that, I think I would have quit. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. Here you go, girlfriend. Let's see. Hold that up there. Nice job. Thanks. Boy, we were nice in a tight too. spot. Yeah. All right. <laughs> well, wouldn't you know we bumped another one right out after Elise shot her rabbit. Hit it. No. That's it. Today didn't really showcase just how good these guys' dogs really are. The deep snow made for some tricky conditions. Sean is the president of the Muskegon County Beagle Club and puts a lot of time into his dogs. We're a little pack club uh, through the National Kennel Club and we compete our hounds. And uh, so, you know, I, I enjoy running my dogs, hunting them, you know, and running them and competing them because, you know, they're, they're a very competitive breed, these beagles are. and. Uh, it's just a lot of fun. Is it? Yeah, it's a great time. It's the more time on the ground, the better they'll get, you know. Um, it gives them experience, you know. The more time, you know, the better they get. You, run, you try to run them in groups of their own age. You, we try not to run our real young dogs with these dogs, um, you know, because they're so much more different, you know, caliber at that age than they are, you know, the young dogs are. 
Much like bird hunters, coon hunters, and a lot of bear hunters, it's all about the dogs. Today we had some good dogs on the ground, and even though we didn't slay the rabbits, it was a perfect winter day. Some new hunters got to burn a little powder, and the older guys got to share some good stories along the way. Just what a day of chasing bunnies is all about. Thanks to all involved today, and if it's been a while since you've heard a beagle on a bunny, well, give your local beagle club a call. I bet you can find someone that would be more than willing to take you along on a snowy winter Michigan morning. Well, hey everybody, thank you so much for watching Michigan Out of Doors this week. And as always, if you missed something on this week's show or last week's show, you want to see something again, you can always check us out online at michiganoutofdoorstv.com. We have full episodes of the show there every week. We're also on YouTube if you want to check us out there and Facebook to see what we're up to on a more day-to-day -day basis. Lots of good stuff coming over the next several weeks here in Michigan Out of Doors. And if we don't see you in the woods or on the water, hopefully we'll see you right back here next week on your PBS station. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by by Greenstone Farm Credit Services, making recreational land ownership possible across Michigan and Northeast Wisconsin. Begin your land financing journey at one of Greenstone's 37 locations or visit greenstonefcs.com. By the Michigan Wildlife Council, entrusted with educating the public on how wildlife in Michigan's outdoors are managed and funded for the use and enjoyment of future generations. Learn how Michigan manages wildlife at hereforMIOutdoors.org by Pictured Rocks Boat Cruises of Munising, exploring Lake Superior's Pictured Rocks National Lakeshore. With its sandstone cliffs, caves, waterfalls, and lighthouses, Pictured Rocks Boat Cruises on the web at picturedrocks.com. By Jace Sporting Goods, with locations in Clare and Gaylord. Jace has been serving the Michigan outdoor enthusiasts since 1971 with a wide variety of outdoor products. The gear, the knowledge, the tradition of Jays. On the web at jaysportinggoods.com. Closed captioning provided by Marvo Mineral, makers of Lucky Buck, deer management products including minerals to supplement deer diets year-round to improve health and antler growth. When I want a far away, a dream stays with me night and day. It's the road that leads to my home state. I am a Michigan man. Changing seasons paint the scene like rainbow trout in a hidden stream. White-tailed deer in the tall pine trees I am a Michigan man